One of the joys of being a shiny new website like Ars Technica UK is that we get to set ourselves up with some serious kit. And given that I'm going to spend a great whack of time reviewing games and testing hardware, naturally a killer benchmarking rig was at the top of my list. So let me introduce you to this, the 6-core, 12-thread, 32GB of RAM M2 SSD powered, custom built Ars Technica UK benchmarking rig, which I've decided to dub the Great White, because well, it's absolutely ginormous and it's uh, in a white case. Okay, so coming up with witty names for things isn't one of my strong points, but I'd like to think that putting together decent computer hardware is. Now bear in mind this wasn't a total money is no object build, but rather a rig that's intended to serve two practical purposes. Test the latest graphics cards and hardware, and run lots of games. And if it could last longer than a couple of years, all the better. With those goals in mind, picking out the components was easy. While Intel's Skylake platform has just hit the scene, it's still limited to four physical cores and 20 PCIe lanes. That's fine for most, but we want to be able to test what going further than four cores with hyperthreading gets you. That left us with one option, Intel's X99 Enthusiast platform. At the heart of the PC is Asus's top-of-the-line X99 Deluxe USB 3.1 motherboard, which can handle up to three-way SLI and Crossfire, dual 32GB per second ultra-fast M2 X4, SATA Express, 12 SATA ports, up to 128GB of RAM, two Intel Gigabit NICs, DigiPlus CPU power for overclocking, and, well, basically, you name it, this thing has it. Sitting in the ginormous socket is Intel's 6-core i7-5930K. The 5930K is the Haswell E sweet spot, giving us a full 40 PCIe lanes to play with without having to stretch to the eye-wateringly expensive 8-core CPU. Keeping it cool is Corsair's H110i GT 280mm closed-loop liquid cooler, complete with totally unnecessary and totally awesome RGB lighting. Given components will be swapped out every now and then, it's a more sensible option than a full water cooling loop. The CPU is backed up by 32GB of Corsair Vengeance LPX RAM, spread across four slots, so we can take full advantage of quad-channel bandwidth. Storage is handled by a 512GB Samsung SM951 M2 SSD, a regular 500GB Samsung Evo SSD, and a good old-fashioned 7200RPM 3TB Seagate hard drive, which will all let us test performance across a variety of storage setups. Power comes courtesy of a 1200W Corsair HX1200i, complete with colour-matched, sleeved white cables. Plus, I stuck a few other goodies in there, including a Blackmagic 4K video capture card for console capture, as well as an LG Blu-ray drive. Because, oddly enough, press still sometimes get sent things on a physical CD. I know, retro. Most of the time, graphics will be handled by an NVIDIA GTX 980 Ti like this one, but of course, we'll be swapping out GPUs as and when we need to test something shiny and new. Housing it all is Corsair's huge 760T case, picked because A, it looks cool, and B, it's big enough to house pretty much any component we throw at it, while the hinged doors make it easy to get inside. The cost for that little lot? A cool £2,723, or around $4,246 to our US friends. Sounds good so far, right? But how does it perform? Insanely well. After overclocking the RAM to 3000 MHz at 1.3 volts and the CPU to 4.5 GHz at 1.29 volts from its 3.5 GHz base clock, it screams through benchmarks. For starters, we're talking 1.5 GB per second write speeds and 1.8 GB per second read speeds from the Samsung M2 drive, which is enough for direct 4K 60 frames per second capture, should that ever come up. Cinebench flies, returning a score of 1,287, beating a 12-core X5650 Xeon CPU and miles ahead of the 4-core i7s. We hit a score of 7,443 in 3D Mark Firestrike Ultra and an average of 60 frames per second in Unigen Heaven at 1440p, making this machine an absolute monster. 
More importantly, it gives us options. Want to see what switching to a quad or even a dual core CPU does to performance? Easy, just disable cores in the BIOS. Does a particular game suffer from streaming from a slower spinning platter hard drive like Batman Arkham Knight did? Well, we can just install to the hard drive. And if we just want to go all out and see what a triple SLI setup can do without having to take a hit on PCIe lane speeds, well, we can do that too. But let us know what you think about our choices. What would your ultimate benchmarking rig be? And what would you like to see us test in the future? Let us know in the comments and for more hardware coverage, be sure to keep your browser locked to Ars Technica UK and ArsTechnica.com.